Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, if you or a loved one has a health challenge that you'd like help dealing with, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. And of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side today and every day, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can purchase products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website as well for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, earn thank you checks associated with your longevity business, and if you're an entrepreneur, you can start your own business. It's great being an entrepreneur. I've been in the entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur for since 1991. I started my first business, and I love it. You make your own hours. You're your own boss. You make as much or as little money as you want. You can work out of your home, enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business, and of course, you get your products at the wholesale price too. Call 866-735-2470. They can give you the scoop, or you can sign up right off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. If you're the kind of person that likes to help people, if you're uh, health-minded, if you like nutrition, like nutritional supplements, you can make some money by getting yourself in the health business, in the nutrition business. Sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, or, or uh, brightsideben.com. Brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. News.com. And of course, if you'd like to check out our Truth Skin Health products, we would love that. Truth, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, or Truth Retinol 5% Gel made with retinol and vitamin C. Our Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega 6 Healing Cream, all made with generous amounts of vitamin C. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, oils, emulsifiers, surfactants, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. And any of our Truth Skin Health products. TruthTreatments.com, TruthTreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. Once again, we're talking about the world's most popular non-water beverage and my personal favorite beverage, green tea. Last program, we talked about green tea's anti-diabetic properties. How cool is that? You can drink green tea, you catch a buzz off the caffeine, it tastes awesome, and it helps stabilize and lower your blood sugar. Helps keep your blood sugar uh, under control. Last program, we talked about how you can keep your blood sugar under control as you're eating your meal. If you sip on green tea while you're eating your meal, or even better, drinking it before meals, you'll find that in addition to potentizing insulin, making insulin stronger so you don't need as much insulin, and controlling blood sugar, you're also going to be eating less food. There's a satiety effect to drinking green tea. You get satisfied quicker. Make sure you add cinnamon to your green tea. Cinnamon is one of the all-time great spices for helping control blood sugar, not only for helping control blood sugar, but it also potentizes 
the sweet taste of sugar. So if you add cinnamon to sweet foods, you'll find that you're eating less sugar. Cinnamon has a way of amplifying the sweetness associated with sugar, and it also makes your insulin more uh, makes your insulin more responsive and helps you uh, helps your blood sugar stay uh, helps control your blood sugar. From the Journal of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, November two, uh, November 2012. Effective ground cinnamon on postprandial, that means after eating, postprandial blood glucose concentration in normal weight and obese adults. In healthy normal weight adults, cinnamon reduces blood glucose concentration and enhances insulin sensitivity, insulin resistance, and results in increased fasting and postprandial blood glucose and insulin levels, which is commonly observed in, uh, in obese individuals. Researchers concluded that cinnamon may be effective in moderating postprandial glucose response in normal weight and obese adults. Another article, this is from Food and Chemical Toxicology, Protective Effect of Cinnamon Polyphenols Against uh, Diabetic Mice Fed High Sugar and High Fat Diets. Researchers concluded that cinnamon can induce a hypoglycemic and hypolipidemic effect. That means it can lower blood fats and lower blood sugar. And it can also help repair pancreatic beta cells. How do you like that? It can, not only does it help lower blood sugar, this is cinnamon, not only does it help lower blood sugar and improve blood sugar control, but it also helps repair pancreatic beta cells, the kind of cells that are destroyed when you have type one diabetes. So cinnamon may help uh, improve blood, blood sugar control for type one diabetics, that is autoimmune disease diabetics, as well as type two diabetics, that is insulin resistant diabetics. And there's more from June 2012, the journal uh, Nutrition Research, Research, cinnamon extract improves fasting blood glucose levels in Chinese patients with type 2 diabetes. Researchers concluded that cinnamon supplementation is able to significantly improve blood glucose control in Chinese patients with type 2 diabetes. You guys, this is amazing. Cinnamon is amazing stuff. Add it to your green tea for double amazingness. Green tea and cinnamon for lowering your blood sugar control. Yesterday we said you got to make sure your green tea, or you don't have to, but it's best to do your green tea on an empty stomach. Yes, it's true that if you sip on your green tea with meals, you'll get some benefits, but you'll get real good benefits if you use your green tea on an empty stomach. That's because the active ingredients in green tea, specifically the EGCG, is not really absorbed very effectively out of the intestine, and food can interfere with that absorption a little bit. And then the body also detoxes green tea pretty, or EGCG, it uh, cleans out EGCG pretty readily at the level of the liver. And this will also reduce the health impact of uh, the health benefits of your green tea. So take your green tea on an empty stomach if you can. Use green tea capsules if you don't want to go all out and make your green tea and sip on green tea. You'll get a lot of benefit from green tea capsules, which are cheap. And you can use green uh, black pepper with your green tea supplements. Black pepper extract is really interesting. Black pepper contains a substance called piperine, P-I-P-E-R-I-N-E, piperine, which is well known for increasing the absorption of nutrients into cells. That's pretty cool. Black pepper, it will bump up the benefits that you get from your, uh, from your nutritional supplements. And you can actually get piperine. You don't need just black pepper. You can get piperine supplements on the internet as well. So you can use piperine or you can use black pepper supplements to uh, enhance the absorption of all your nutritional supplementation. And for that matter, all your medications as well. You may find that you're able to lower your dose on your medicines if you use piperine with your, with your uh, medication. If you use uh, black pepper with your medication, you may find that your medication is even stronger than it would be otherwise, which is a good thing. That means you can lower your dose. As it turns out, the constituents in black pepper have a pretty impressive ability to enhance the activity of a whole range of medicinal phytochemicals. So any herbal medicine that you're taking and any pharmaceutical medicine that you're taking and any nutritional supplements that you're taking, amino acids, vitamins, and minerals, you'll get better benefits from your supplements, medication, or phytonutrients, or herbal medicine if you use a little piperine, P-I-P-E-R-I-N-E, piperine, or black pepper with your, uh, with your supplements or medication. All right, a couple more things I want to say about green tea, and then we will move on to the most powerful and important and abundant class of plant nutrients, the bioflavonoids, also known as vitamin P. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back. 
back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com. You can purchase longevity products off brightsideben.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team from brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. You can also purchase our Truth Skin Health products from truthtreatments.com, Truth Balm, Truth Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Truth Retinol 5% Gel. If you've tried to use Retinol in the past and haven't been able to, or Retin-A in the past, Retinoic Acid in the past and haven't been able to, you might want to try our Truth Retinol 5% Gel. It's much, much, much less irritating than ordinary retinol products, even though it is it has the highest amount of retinol that you're going to find anywhere. That's the way I formulate, folks. High power, high potency, no baloney, no bull, uh, bull crap. Like this program. This is a no-nonsense program. We cut to the core of nutrition. And when I'm formulating my skin health products, they're no-nonsense products. You don't get any wax or water or filler or silicon or oil or none of the fillers that are in most skin health products, most skin care products. Most skin care products are 90 to 95% water. That alone tells you what a scam the skin care business is. Not our true skin health products. Our true skin health products are 100% active and functional ingredients. You can find out all about them at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, so green tea for diabetes control, green tea for the heart, green tea for cancer, green tea for taste, green tea for energy, and green tea for antibiotic resistance. It turns out that green tea has got some pretty interesting antimicrobial properties, and with antibiotic resistance becoming more and more common, last December, New Scientist ran an article, New Scientist magazine, which is a really cool scientific magazine that's somewhat technical, but it's really, it's not too bad. It's, it's really accessible for the layperson, and it's got some good stuff stories in it. I get it every week and uh, read a story here a couple of, uh, last December I read a story and I saved it about uh, a lady who died after being infected by a bacteria called Klebsiella. This bacteria was resistant to 26 different antibiotics. Now, green tea is antimicrobial, and it actually may have some relevance when it comes to antibiotic resistance, which one, is one of the great and understated and underappreciated health challenges of our time. Imagine getting a bacterial infection, you go to the hospital, and there's no antibiotics at work. That's terrible. You've all heard of MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staph aureus. That's a, a, a bacteria that is now resistant to many uh, antibiotics. Some of these resistant bacteria, you can kill them with super high-powered antibiotics, but more and more, even the super high-powered ones aren't working. Well, it turns out that this antibiotic or antimicrobial property of green tea may have some relevance here. Apparently, when EGCG, which is one of the primary actives, it's probably the most important active material in green tea, when EGCG is added to antibacterials that have lost their potency, the medication becomes revitalized. It becomes potentized. Antibiotic resistant bac uh, 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 bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics are no longer resistant to the antibiotics once you add some EGCG to them. And this finding may have some real tremendous relevance for addressing uh, infectious diseases in the future as drug companies begin to explore leveraging the synergy of green tea's EGCG with their antibiotics. Of course, they'll probably end up with patented medication. They'll call it antibiotic plus EGCG, and they'll own the patent for 17 years and sell it to you for an exorbitant price. But you can do it yourself. Just keep drinking your green tea, and you'll get to the antimicrobial properties. And if you use your green tea with your antibiotic, you'll actually potentize your antibiotic. Drink some green tea when you take your antibiotics. Use your green tea as an antimicrobial beverage. Just the tea itself will have some antibacterial properties. Scientists writing in the journal Food Science Technological Bulletin go on to say that green tea actives can inhibit the growth of a wide range of potent bacterial species. This is, this is pretty powerful stuff for a benign beverage, for a gentle beverage that is readily available, that tastes great, and is super cheap. Throw in some lemon juice, and you'll get some vitamin C. That'll further support the antimicrobial properties of your tea. According to researchers from the Department of Medical Microbiology at London's Royal Free and University College Medical School, green tea components may be useful in treating gum disease and oral infections 
and it may even prevent cavities. Sip on your green tea, get less cavities. In fact, more and more green tea's ability to improve oral health is being recognized. The antibacterial properties of green tea can be taken advantage of as a remedy for bad breath, for halitosis. It's substantial, and I mean substantial antioxidant properties. It's a powerful antioxidant. It can reduce oral oxidation and inflammation. After you smoke a cigarette, you uh, get all kinds of oxidative byproducts in your mouth. This is one of the reasons why people get mouth cancer, tongue cancer, throat cancer from smoking cigarettes. Sip on green tea after you smoke your cigarette. You'll be able to at least partially mitigate or reverse some of the toxic, poisonous effects of cigarettes. Cigarette smokes nasty compounds, nicotine, acrolein. There's all kinds of nasty stuff in, uh, in cigarette smoke. Tars. A lot of the negative effects of these substances can be reduced by green tea polyphenol substance, substances like EGCG. You can think of green tea as an all-around protecting su protective beverage, all-around protective substance, preventing the transformation of healthy cells into malignant cells, preventing oxidative, oxidative reactions, oxidation, inducing what is called apoptosis, which is cell suicide. When cells get cancerous or when cells get mutated, they will actually kill themselves to prevent replication of sick cells, to, pre to prevent replication of mutated cells. That's called apoptosis, A-P-O-P-T-O-S-I-S, known as cell suicide. Well, green tea can induce apoptosis of oral cancer cells. And green tea is awesome for uh, preventing heart disease. Heart disease is the leading cause of death. One third of deaths in the world are due to heart disease, and heart disease is largely a lifestyle issue. One third of people in the, who die, this is worldwide, die from heart disease. It is by far the leading cause of death in this country, and it turns out that green tea can help mitigate the effects of heart disease. Remember, if you factor in diabetes, by the way, Diabetes and the relationship diabetes has to heart disease and the relationship that diabetes has to cancer, diabetes is really the leading cause of death, and we know that green tea helps with that. Green tea helps with it as an anti-cancer anti -cancer beverage. Green tea helps as a, it can be used as an anti-heart disease beverage. Between diabetes, heart disease, and cancer, you've got, by far and away, the major causes of death in this country and around the world, and green tea can help protect you against all of those things. Numerous studies talk about green tea as a cancer protective, especially for hormonal cancers, breast cancer, reproductive cancers, prostate cancer. Cancers require special enzymes to do their business of metastases. Metastases is the traveling of cancer. Cancer stays local and then it travels uh, to different organs of the body. That's called metastases. And there are enzymes that are required for this metastases to occur. One particular uh, enzyme is called urokinase. And as it turns out, urokinase inhibitors, inhibitors, uh, substances that inhibit the action of this enzyme, slowing down or preventing metastases, are found throughout the plant kingdom. And this is one of the most important mechanisms mechanisms for the anti-cancer, the well-known anti-cancer properties of herbs and fruits and veggies and various botanicals. Some of the most powerful urokinase inhibitors are found in curcumin, turmeric, and also green tea. And by the way, throw a little turmeric in your green tea, you'll get a super duper anti-cancer beverage. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll take a quick commercial break and come back with you and your phone calls right after this on the Bright Side. Back on the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, or success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get to your calls here in just a sec. Uh, let's see here. This is from the Medical News Today. Uh, journal uh, article that was published in the journal Ather uh, Arteriosclerosis, Thrombosis, and Vascular Biology, which is an American Heart Association journal. Eating more fruits and vegetables may lower the risk of blockages in leg arteries. After studying data from 3.7 million people, researchers found that the folks who ate three or more daily servings of fruit and veggies had 18% lower odds of peripheral artery disease which is uh, leg, uh, uh, 
disease that narrows the arteries of the legs and limits blood flow to the muscles, makes it difficult to stand, can cause neuropathies and pain. People who ate three or more daily servings of fruits and veggies had 18% lower odds of PAD than those reporting less. Overall, 6.3% of participants had PAD and 29% reported eating uh, three or more servings of fruits and vegetables. That is, the more fruits and veggies you ate, the less likely you were to have peripheral artery disease. Now we know why, because of the wonderful polyphenols that are found in fruits and vegetables because of the phytonutrients that we've been talking about here on the Bright Side now for the last couple of months or so. From, uh, let's see here, this is from the journal Immunity, Master Detox Molecule Boosts Immune Defenses. It turns out that you have a master detoxification molecule that lives in the liver, primarily. You have it, it's, it's present in other parts of the body, but primarily the liver. And this master detoxification molecule is responsible for cleaning out poison, specifically drug poison, heavy metal poison, food toxins. And it turns out that this master detox molecule also jacks up the immune system. It also turns on immunity. It activates the immune system. It stimulates what are called T-cells. T-cells are the ant, uh, major uh, uh, cells of the immune system. T-cells make antibodies. And it uh, turns out that this master detox molecule will actually jack up your T-cells, turn on your T-cells. Our body has to keep the immune system in a carefully balanced state of equilibrium, says Professor Dirk Brenner, who is the author of the study. If the body's innate defenses are overactive, they turn against the body. This is what happens in autoimmune diseases. However, if defenses are too weak, they cannot handle infections. Well, our master detox molecule helps activate these immune cells, and the master detox molecule is none other than the famous glutathione. Arguably the most important molecule in the body. Cholesterol's up there, but glutathione is arguably, at least it's one of the most important molecules in the body. The way to get your glutathione going is to use glutathione building supplements, especially whey protein. Whey protein is one of the all-time great ways. Using whey protein is one of the all-time great strategies for building your own glutathione. Glutathione is made up of three components. One is called cysteine, another is called glycine, and another is called glutamine. All three are available in foods, all three are available in supplements. Whey protein is not just a good source of glutathione, it's also a good source of the building blocks of glutathione. N-acetylcysteine, NAC, which I, is my favorite supplement, certainly my favorite non-essential supplement. It's not essential, but it is super helpful as a detoxification supplement. I put it in my blemish repair complex. By the way, if you're dealing with acne blemishes, you definitely want to check out our blemish repair complex at truthtreatments.com. And acetylcysteine is a chelating agent. It magnetically attracts poisons, magnetically attracts heavy metals. It's wonderful for folks dealing with hangovers. It's awesome for liver health. It's great for lung health, too, for cigarette smokers. And it helps build glutathione. The second component of glutathione is called glycine. You'll get your glycine in your bone broth protein, also in whey protein. Anything with cartilage in it will have some glycine. Glycine deficiencies is one of the um, most underappreciated of all nutritional deficiencies. People will t glycine is not an essential nutrient. You can find glycine. Actually, no, I should think about that. No, glycine is not an essential nutrient, but you can, uh, you can certainly, uh, m most of us can certainly use more glycine. Glycine comes in car is found in cartilage, it's found in high protein foods, and there's glycine in our bone broth protein. And then the third component is the most important of the amino acids, at least in terms of uh, free floating amino acids in the blood, and that's called glutamine. Glutamine is also found in whey protein, and glutamine is found in high protein foods in general, and it's easy to get glutamine in a supplement. Get the powdered glutamine, you'll save some money. Use half a teaspoonful, te half a teaspoonful to a teaspoonful every day. It's great for blood sugar control. It's great for intestinal health. Cells can actually use glutamine instead of glucose, intestinal cells that is, can use glutamine instead of glucose for energy. That makes, that makes glutamine super important for the intestine and it is also a key component for building the master detox molecule and now the immune activating molecule Glutathione. All right, eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. Let's go to Brian in New Hampshire. Good morning, Brian. Welcome to the Bright Side, buddy. Good morning, Ben. Great to talk to you. Same here. What's going on? Uh, well, I, I, you know what? I actually want to go back to your, the green tea question. I'm actually sipping on a green tea, but it's one of these green teas that have a lot of other ingredients in them. And I wanted to ask you, just, just because it doesn't have a lot of sugar in it, uh, 
artificial sweeteners aren't mm. treated equally, right? No, so artificial, artificial sweeteners see, have their own problems. They're not, it's not great. What, is that what you're going to ask me about artificial sweeteners? Right. I, I have a whey protein that has a sucralose, uh, that's a, I believe a sugar alcohol. You don't need it. Yeah, no, it's, uh, an, it's not a sugar alcohol. It's a fake. It might be a sugar alcohol, but it's synthetic. No, you don't need. You don't need sweetener in a product. You add your own sweetener. The reason they add a, the reason companies add sweeteners in there is because they're cheap, and it's, it's a way to get people to use more of their product. You don't need a sweetener in whey protein. You can add your own sweetener. You get some organic cherry, organic uh, frozen cherries, and just drop a couple organic frozen cherries in there, or use some uh, stevia if you really want to have something sweet. But uh, for organic organic frozen fruit is a great sweetener for your whey protein smoothies. I, I don't sucralose is one of the nastier synthetic synthetic sweeteners, by the way. Is that what's in your green tea? Uh, yes, uh, I'm sipping something unfortunately that has acetylsalicylic potassium, which I'm sure isn't the same thing as potassium. No, it's definitely sucralose. not. <laughs> no, that's another artificial sweetener. Acesulfame, cheap artificial sweetener. There's no need for artificial sweeteners. And artificial sweeteners still will spike your insulin, or at least sensitize your insulin, or not sensitize your insulin, but, but stimulate the secretion of insulin, and they can be a problem for folks who are dealing with insulin resistance problems. So I'm not a big believer in artificial sweeteners. Of course, sugar is a problem too, so you pick your poison, as they say. Uh, but uh, you're not out of the woods by using a, an artificial sweetener, that's for sure. Okay, so it's really just taking the effort to brew your own tea in the morning. That's, generally, like, effort. that's the only what thing. You, Brian, effort. It's you done. drop a couple of tea bags. <laughs> it's boiling water. <laughs> what effort? Just boil some water, drop your green tea bag in there, put a little honey in there if you want sweetener. Make sure you use cinnamon. or And in addition to cinnamon, I put clove and ginger and uh, a little nutmeg in there, and it tastes awesome. And it, ta it takes all of five minutes to do. It's not like you're going to work up a sweat making up your green tea. Okay. That, you know what? It's, it's just excuses. That, but a lot of people do it. On the whey protein side, is there yeah. any reason to take BCAAs if you're already taking whey in the morning? You can bump up the BCAAs. Let's talk about BCAAs when we get uh, branched chain amino acids when we come back from our break, because that's a good topic. Don't go away, Brian, okay? I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll get you all your calls here when we come back from our commercial break. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back after this. All right, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Brian in New Hampshire about artificial sweeteners and whey protein. You there, Brian? I am, Ben. Okay, so sucralose is not a sugar alcohol, by the way. It's a chlorinated sugar. It's a drug company sugar. It's, it was manufactured, it was uh, uh, discovered by drug companies. They chlorinated, uh, they added a little bit of chlorine to sucrose, I believe it was, to create sucralose. And because of the chlorine, it's not absorbed. And thus, they think that it's better for you than sugar. But it's nasty stuff, nonetheless. And uh, all, all non-sugar non sweeteners should be regarded with great skepticism, in my opinion. Um, and then also the sugar alcohols, what you mentioned the sugar alcohols, they're also known as polyols. Uh, those can be really problematic for the digestive system, especially for folks who are dealing with IBS or ulcerative colitis. You've got to be really, really careful with things like sorbitol, mannitol. You can tell a sugar alcohol by the ending OL. When you hear OL at the end, like uh, uh, sorbitol is the, is the most famous one, uh, you'll, you're dealing with a sugar alcohol. You ever hear about dogs that will drink antifreeze? and then die. The, the, reason yeah. they drink, the reason they drink the antifreeze is because antifreeze is glycol, ethylene glycol. It's a sugar alcohol, and it tastes sweet. And, uh, and dogs like the sweet taste, but unfortunately, it's also deadly poison. Propylene glycol, which m many folks have heard of as an additive in, uh, in skincare products, is also a sugar alcohol. Uh, as far as your BCAA questions, uh, question goes, BCAA stands for branched chain amino acids. And these are very, very powerful building blocks for uh, for muscle, and they're also appetite suppressants. They're found in whey protein, and all all high all high protein foods will have you some BCAAs in there. But if you're a bodybuilder, weightlifter, if you're 
uh, if you're dealing with some kind of uh, post-surgical repair, you want to accelerate healing. Uh, it's a, or if you're just getting older and you find that you're getting frailer, it's not a bad idea to supplement with BCAAs in addition to whey protein, although, Brian, your point is well taken. There are BCAAs in whey protein as well as other high-protein foods. So you can get BCAAs pretty cheap, uh, pretty cheaply in most health food stores or vitamin stores or on the Internet. And if you're, as I say, if you're an athlete or if you're dealing with some kind of surgical repair issues or if you're just frail and you don't want to be frail anymore and you're, and you're lifting weights uh, to build muscle, uh, you may want to throw in some BCAAs in addition to your whey protein. Does that help? Ben, I just wanted to say one more thing. I think that, like, since you've been doing this show for so long, you're, you don't get thanked enough for the, the job that you've done. The, the amount of oh. the life-changing effects that you've had on me, my life personally Thank has, you. Has, has been absolutely un understated, and, I, and I, I can't thank you enough. Thank, thank you, so. you so much, Brian. I really appreciate it. That means a lot to me. Thank you, buddy. Have a beautiful day, Brian. Take care, man. You too. All right. Uh, that's always nice to hear. All right, let's see. Uh, 844-236-6010. Let's go to Rachel in Texas. Good morning, Rachel. What's up? Thank you for taking my call. I have my neighbor. Her name is Socorro, and she's 62 years old. Okay. Uh, a little overweight. She's like 200, but she's in severe pain with her ulcers. Stomach she's ulcer? The, okay. Pardon? What, stomach ulcer, intestinal ulcer, skin ulcer? What kind of ulcer? It's stomach Stomach it's, ulcer. Know, All right, couple. When she takes milk, it, it soothes it. Yeah, that's awful. That's that's a terrible, terrible thing. You know, ulceration can, is a leading cause of gastric bleeding, which is a leading cause of death, and it is not anything to take to take lightly. Do you know what the most important cause of ulcers are, by the way? No. Something called H. pylori bacteria. Have you ever heard of that? No. H. pylori is a bacteria that overgrows and it uh, suppresses stomach acid production and it can digest, it can cause uh, uh, ulcerations or it can actually eat the stomach lining causing an ulceration. So a couple things you want to do. First of all, absolutely positively get on the nightly essence probiotics. This gal's got other problems too. Nobody just has an ulcer because this H. pylori, this overgrowth of H. pylori, H. pylori is spelled H period P-Y-L-O-R-I for folks who want to look into that. Uh, uh, H. pylori infections can cause urinary tract infections and all kinds of other problems. So nobody just has uh, a stomach ulceration. If you go to the doctor these days, they're going to actually give you an antibiotic for your stomach ulcer. Uh, that, of course, will mess up your intestine, but it may kill the H. pylori. Uh, I prefer people using uh, probiotics, number one, the, night, the, the nightly essence, and fermented food if she can handle fermented food. She may not be able to with the ulceration, but uh, if she can do fermented food, that would help. But definitely the nightly essence. Uh, make sure that she's eating a lot less food and liquefying her foods as much as possible. Uh, it's interesting that she says milk it helps. That's because milk has an alkaline, ha neutralizes the acid, has an alkalizing effect. But of course, milk can be a problem too. She may want to try some sodium bicarbonate, sodium bicarbonate solution. That might, uh, she may get a little soothing effect from that. Um, and then uh, li liquefying all her foods. And one, let me say a couple last things. The fucoid Z may help. And also bone soup or chicken soup with the cartilage. Cartilage contains some nice soothing substances uh, for the for the stomach and for ulcerations, and then also uh, a high hyaluronic acid, H Y A L U R O N I C, high hyaluronic acid capsules can help. And let me see if there's anything else I want to tell you about. I told you about the fucoid Z algae in general, al uh, algae in general, and aloe vera. Aloe vera actually would be very helpful, or noni juice. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What were you going to say? Should she stop drinking milk? No, uh, milk's not great food, though. I mean, uh, if it's raw milk, it comes right from the cow. That could be helpful. But for most people, you know, buying homogenized and pasteurized milk at the store, that's definitely not. Uh, that's definitely not a health food. So, um, I would, you know, I wouldn't. It's not great for her. Put it that way. It's not. It's she's got bigger fish to fry at this point. But it's not great for her. Yeah. Anything, anything well, else? I, uh, okay. I don't know if I can you take one more question not related sure. to this one. I have a lady sure. on the other line, conference. She's got scabies. Yeah. The whole family that, has scabies. Yeah, you know, that's not a nutritional thing, scabies, um, but it's uh, definitely miserable. The best way to deal with scabies, unfortunately, is to kill them with drugs. You know, get some hardcore drugs. That's the only thing that's going to really work. There's no nutritional compound that's going to get rid of scabies. That's a topical issue, a topical infection, and you've got to kill the bugs. And like I say, I've said this before, I'm not a big believer in drugs, but there are times when you need to have prescription medication, and scabies is one of those. 
So you need to get and go to. A you need to doctor. kill those things. Yeah, you need to kill those things. And and by the way, the stuff they use to kill those things are really, really nasty. For your, also for your gal with the, uh, I should, forgot to mention this. In addition to aloe vera, uh, for the gal who has the, uh, for the uh, stomach ulcers, using uh, uh, slimy herbs like slippery elm or colt's foot or mallow can be very helpful. It can be very soothing. Anything that's got slimy quality to it. Also, uh, cabbage contains something called vitamin U, which stands for vitamin ulcer. Nobody really knows what that is, but it actually can be used as an ulcer treatment. So that's something else that your friend might want to think. About. I'm going to try to get one more call in, Rachel. Thanks so much for your call. Appreciate it. Hope we helped you Thank out. You. Let's, uh, let's see here. Let's go to Elaine in Alaska. Good morning, Elaine. What's going on? Hey, good morning. Good talking to you always. So Same. I Yeah, I've got a, a quick question. Um, a client, uh, she is um, doing everything right in air quotes, um, but just having a problem losing weight. Hmm. She's having a problem losing weight. She's five foot nine. She went from two eleven to two oh one and has just stopped. She's How working, old is she? Uh, she's in her mid fifties. She's working okay. with a trainer like two forty. Trainers, listen. Exercise is incredibly overrated for losing weight. It's not that right. it's not important. Exercise is important, but you're not going to lose a lot of weight just by exercise. Two elements to weight loss. Number one, or well, three elements really. Number one, digestive issues. Digestive toxicity will cause weight uh, cause weight gain, especially body fat. Number two, blood sugar, and number three, cortisol. That's your triangle of disease right there. Focus on cortisol. That is reducing uh, the effects of stress, psychological stress, mental stress, as well as digestive stress and sugar stress and lowering your insulin. Using insulin support nutrients like the sweeties, selenium, uh, more fiber, more water, and then also lowering your cortisol by using relaxation strategies, deep breathing techniques, visualization, psychological strategies, as well as uh, muscle relaxation, things like massage and Reiki and hot tubs and hot showers, anything you could do to lower cortisol. Do not underestimate the importance and the relevance of stress when it comes to weight loss, especially for people who have a hard time losing weight or for people who plateau. You know, you lose the first 20 pounds, then you can't lose any more weight. Usually you're dealing with, with, with stress issues, whether it's psychological or physiologic stress. Low-carb diet, ketogenic diet is, is actually ideal for that. Keep the sugar out, lower the insulin, sensitize the insulin, and then reduce cortisol levels. You can use vitamin A and vitamin E to reduce cortisol, uh, cortisol the impact of cortisol. You can also use the hormone own pregnenolone and also progesterone to reduce the impact of cortisol. Progesterone will do double duty because it will help balance out estrogen, which is also a weight gain hormone. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for your call, Lane. Appreciate it. I'm Pharmacist Ben. If you want to check out our True Skin Health products, head to truthtreatments.com. If you want to purchase any of your our longevity products, head to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. And if you want to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team, call 866-735-20. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.